and we'll be following this story through and baby Jesus is not quite in the crib yet and if I get my timing right baby Jesus will arrive just on midnight I hope you can see enough to read the, read the words and sing the songs because I, I thought it'd be quite nice to have it all in candlelight this evening so as we gather in worship this evening some words for this evening welcome all wonders in one sight eternity span shut in a span summer in winter day in night heaven in earth and god in man great little one on whose all-embracing breath brings earth to heaven stoops heaven to earth dear friends as we gather to celebrate the birth of christ let us pray that god will bless this crib that all who worship his son born of the blessed virgin mary they come to share his life and glory. God our Father, on this night, your Son Jesus Christ will be born of the Virgin Mary. And for us and for our salvation, bless this crib, which we have prepared to celebrate our holy birth, that all who see it may be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring who is alive and reigns forever. Amen. On our candle in the centre of our Advent wreath, I will light in a few minutes' time as we gather towards midnight. So as we start this evening, I thought it appropriate to him sing hymn number 80, which is appropriately Born in the Night, Mary's Son. So let's stand and sing if we can see the words. If not, do your best. Hymn number 80, Born in the Night, Mary's Child. It goes with a little bit of a lift. Thank you. will walk in our streets this Christmas. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine and confess our sins. God, our Father, you sent your Son, full of grace and truth, forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love. Your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, the God of healing and forgiveness 
draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let us stand on this day to declare the glory in excelsis, which we say, say for the first time after the end of Advent. As we join together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. In the glory of God. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray in the peace of this Christmas celebration that our joy in the birth of Christ will last ever. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your own true light, bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please do sit for our first reading, which is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I'm reading from Isaiah 52, starting at verse 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, you sentinels, lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Our next hymn is in the bleak midwinter. So let's stand to sing hymn number, carol number 326.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. A reading from the first chapter of the Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to that light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who are born not of blood, or the will of the flesh, or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Christ. Christ. May I speak this evening in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do sit. I've got a bit of light on my tablet, so it's much easier. So, on this special night, as I watch the clock, before we mark the birth of Jesus our Saviour, I always find, and you will we'll hear in a moment, they move in prayers, the set prayers of intercession for this night. Each one, as you'll hear, starts with, in this holy night. <coughs> in this holy night, 2022 years ago, a great number of things happened which changed the course of history and which have been considered and prayed over ever since. The enormity of the fact that the creator of everything and everyone would suffer and become a small, vulnerable child dependent on others for his care and nurture is almost too much to contemplate, yet it happened. In the stillness of this late night, we can consider the uncertainties around where and when Jesus was born. Now Mary and Joseph, as we might imagine, must have had a very stressful few hours trying to find somewhere where they could stay in Bethlehem, or at least somewhere that they could afford. They were not wealthy people. And why did they do this? Because attendance in Bethlehem for the census was a legal requirement of the Roman authorities. Every five years, the Roman authorities called upon every man and his family to return to the place of his birth, to be counted in order to keep track of the population. That census played a crucial role in the administration of the expanded Roman Empire and used most importantly to determine taxes. It provided a register of citizens and their property from which duties and privileges and tax could be assessed. So they had to go to Bethlehem, whether they like it or not, and however difficult it would have been for them. 
Now, Bethlehem is not a very large place even now. When I was there, the current population is about 25,000. Now there are a few hotels, mostly for pilgrims and visitors like me who flock to the place all through the year. But 2023 years ago, there were no hotels. So the visitors would have had to rent rooms with the locals. But none of them had any room. Eventually, Mary and Joseph found an inn where the innkeeper had an idea. I suppose we could clear out part of the barn and you could stay there if we really wanted. Now, nothing is known about that kind innkeeper who allowed Mary and Joseph to stay in his barn, which is, if you think about it, quite surprising given the importance of the location of the birth of Jesus. As I was thinking about this this last few days, I wonder how many other unknown people were part of the story of Jesus, were part of his travels of Mary and Joseph. What were the women? on the journey from Nazareth, who took pity on the young expectant mum and persuaded a friend to lend them a donkey. How about the owner of the donkey, who lent it for their journey, or at least part of it even? There were probably many other people on the road, en route to Bethlehem, all rushing to get their, to their respective hometowns so they could abide by the instructions of the Roman occupying army. Now, as I mentioned, if you did read it on my parish email on Friday, perhaps one of the important messages of Christmas as we celebrate the birth of Jesus as Christ is to strive to be as kind and accommodating to others like that unknown innkeeper. It has been very powerful to see how many people in this country over this last year or so have opened up their homes to refugees from Ukraine. And even if we were not able to open up our homes personally, the groundswell of support and care for these refugees has been very powerful to see and experience. We've seen many Ukrainian refugees in this area of Camden. And then by helping others through the food bank and the food hub and food cycle lunches here each week, we can show the love of God through doing, to showing the love of God to all people, whoever they may be. With the birth of Jesus at Bethlehem, we can truly, as Isaiah describes that wonderful passage, break forth singing. And we do have some wonderful songs at Christmas. It's a shame we can't sing all of them all the time. Time is short. So on this quiet and candlelit special evening, let us perhaps consider that un the unnamed people in the story of Jesus. The innkeeper, the women on the, on the journey, the owner of the donkey, and the love of people who looked out and cared for the young couple in the hustle and bustle of travelling. What we, would we have done on a journey like that? Would we have stopped and helped? Or would we have been too busy looking out for ourselves on what is inevitably a difficult journey? I hope that many of us might have been in a position to help, like those people, the unnamed people, or else provide some kindly words of encouragement. Remember, Mary was a young girl, probably no more than 16, 17, 
was very worried about the birth of her first child and all the dangers that brought with no medical support. On this holy night, the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Shall we stand to declare our faith in the words of the Nazarene <coughs> Creed? Mm -hmm. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And was made man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please do sit or kneel as we have our time of prayer. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Father, in this holy night, your Son, our Saviour, was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. So we ask for your blessing, Lord, upon Archbishop Justin, Bishop Sarah of London, and our own area Bishop Rob and all those who are called to minister in your churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this holy night, there was no room for your Son in the inn. Protect with love those this night who have no home, and all who live in poverty, particularly remembering those who struggle with the current cost of living. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. In this holy night, Mary, in the pain of labour, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand this night, Lord, all those in pain or distress, in body, mind or spirit, those at home or in hospital. From our own community, Lord, we remember Rick and Sue, we remember Eleanor, we continue to pray for Bernice, and we continue to pray for Paul Mann and his family back in Canada, as they also struggle with extremes of weather. And Lord, we also remember those who mourn this night, this day, and this last week. We remember in our prayers this evening 
Mr. Kirby Fuller Boston, whose second anniversary of his death fell in the last week or so on the 9th, 19th of December. We pray, Lord, that you will support all those who mourn his passing and keep them in your, in, in your tender, loving arms. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, the angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen all those who work for peace at this time. Remember the people of Ukraine as they have Christmas at war. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will de descend upon all those in positions of authority. That peace may reign and war and bloodshed might cease. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, shepherds in the field heard the good tidings of God. Give us grace to preach the gospel of Christ's redemption. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In this holy night, Christians all over the world come together to celebrate Christ's birth. So, Lord, we pray that our hearts might be open, that he may be born in us this day. Angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary, Joseph, and all the saints, through him who is your word made flesh, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you like to stand, if you could, can, at this point? Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So give each other some Christmas greetings. Peace, peace to you all. Happy Christmas, almost. Then give me a minute or so. Right. Friends, as you gather, I can now officially tell you, Happy Christmas, at one minute past midnight. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Lovely shoes. New faces are always wonderful. Wow. Right. We wait all year for the candles. And eventually, I can like this one. Yeah. Jesus, the light of the world, has come to greet us. And so, in time or fashion, Jesus now is in the first. And just think of that for the moment. Just think of that for a moment. Here we are in the dead of night. We don't really know what time of day Jesus was born, or actually what date it was at all. But just think of that young girl, first